Hello everyone, thank you for watching this video. In this video, we'll demo how to create a transit network VPC with the Cisco CSR 1000V in AWS. As a short overview, what is transit network VPC and why we need it? AWS VPC provides the customers the capability to create virtual network and connect with each other using the VPC peering feature. However, the manual one-to-one -one peering could be a big operation overhead when the customer starts to grow and scale. In this scenario, customer may require a transit hub to connect to other spoke VPCs to form a hub and spoke topology. And this is where our transit VPC solution fits in. For folks who may not be familiar, Cisco CSR1KV is an enterprise class virtual router appliant available in private and public cloud. It runs on iOS XE, sharing the same code base with other Cisco Edge routers such as ASR and ISR 4K. In this transit VP network VPC solution, CSR1KV is used as a hub router to provide routing and VPN services. In addition, customers may optionally enable other services such as zone-based firewall and application visibility control AVC that control and monitor application traffic. The solution is fully automated through AWS CloudFormation template and Lambda functions. It will create the transit VPC infrastructure and launch a pair of CSRs and create tunnels to spoke VPCs that are tagged dynamically. The spoke VPC can be in the same account as a transit VPC, or it can be in a different account. In this demo, we will create a transit VPC and tag two VPCs, one in the same account and one in a different account. As shown in this diagram. Finally, we'll do a ping test from the VM behind the two spoke VPCs to verify the solution. Okay, now let's get started. We will follow the procedure in a documented in the AWS documentation for the transit network VPC here. There are four steps. The first step is to accept the Cisco software terms for the CSR in the AWS marketplace. The second step to launch is launch the stack, which will launch the transit VPC as well as the pair of CSRs. The third step is to tag a spoke VPC in the same account. And you will see the tunnel is created between the transit VPC and the spoke VPC, VGW. The fourth step is optional, where you can create, uh, you can add additional AWS account and create tunnels between the, that the additional AWS account VPC and the transit VPC. Now let's look at our environment. This is our primary account, Cisco AWS in Oregon region. And we have a spoke VPC right now. And we will create a transit VPC in this region. This is our second account as the, with the Cisco system as the account name in the North Virginia region. We have spoke VPCB along with some other VPCs. Now let's proceed with the step one, accept the Cisco software terms. Let's go to the marketplace for the transit network VPC BYOL and click continue. From here, we need to accept the software terms. After the subscription, you should be able to get an email automatically generated to tell that the subscription has been successful. Then we go to the manual launch tab. Select the region as Oregon and deploy model, which is Transnet BC and click the Launch with CloudFormation Console. This will bring us to the CloudFormation Console. 
and the template has already been loaded in this URL. Click Next. For the stack name, let's change to Transit VPC Hub and leave the rest as default. The only thing that you need to mention is that the SSH key to access CISR should be created ahead of time. And here, from the drop down menu, we choose the one that is created previously. You can customize the configurations as needed. Acknowledge this and create. We can see the status as create in progress and in, under the event, it will tell which component are in creation and which one are finished. We can refresh this page from time to time to see the progress. This will take about five minutes. To save time for this demo, we will fast forward. And after five minutes, you will see that the transit VPC stack has been finished. And the status shows create complete. Now if we look at the VPC, we will see that the transit VPC has been created. And if we go to the EC2, running instances, we'll see that the two transit VPC CSR has been created here. Now we can log into the CSR to take a look at the CLI. But before we can do that, we need to make one more modification on the security group. For the inbound, we need to add another row. The reason is, by default, it only allows the SSH from the internal uh, in the AWS for the Lambda function to access the CSR to push in the configurations. So here we want to add another rule uh, to, for us from, uh, to access the CSR from outside. Now let's open the two terminals. And SSH into it, use the demo3 PAM key where we specify when we specified during the stack creation. Here, if we do the show app interface brief, we'll see only one VNIC created over here on both CSRs. This concludes the step two. Now let's move on to step three to tag the spoke VPC in the same account. In this case, we will tag for the spoke VPC A. Let's go back to the VPC. With the existing VPC A, we need to create a virtual private gateway. So here, we need to come to this virtual private gateway and attach it to the spoke VPC A, as seen over here. And in the tag tab, we will need to add it and add another key. The key should be transit VPC spoke and the value is true. Save. 
Now if we go to the VPN connections, we will see two VPN connections are being created. Status is pending. And if we go to the console, show app interface brave. We will see two tunnels are created. From the CLI, if we enable the terminal monitor, we can also see the logs in real time. The tunnels are up and the BGT and BGP neighbor relationship between the transit VPC CSR and VGW are up as well. And at the back of this screen, you will also see that the two VPN connections are available. Now let's move on to step four, connect an additional AWS account. Before we make changes to the second account VPC to tag it, we need to make some changes to the primary account. And we need to modify two files, one in the S3 bucket and the other one is in the IAM key encryption. First, let's get back to the second account and go to my account. Note down this ID number and we will use that when we make changes to the primary account. Let's come to the primary account S3 bucket. And under permissions, let's add it the policy. And add another line for the second account. Click save. Then we need to go to the IAM. In the IAM, come, come to the encryption keys. Choose Oregon region. From the list, find the encryption key for this solution. You will see Transit VPC in the key description in the next screen. Click Alias. From here, we will make some changes to the key policy. In the list of the row, allow to use the master key. Add a new line. Click Save. Now we need to make some changes in the second account. Come back to this documentation and step four. Click the box on the right to launch VGW Pooler in second account. If you already logged in to the AWS Management Console, this should bring you to this CloudFormation console directly, and the URL is loaded in this box. Click Next. Stack name, we can give it a spoke VPC demo. And the bucket name, we need to use the exact one as the S3 bucket name in the primary account. Let's go back to the primary account and go to S3 and find the stack name for the transit VPC. We can copy this name and paste it into the bucket and click next and next. Acknowledge and create.
as we can see here, the stack is created in progress. As we refresh, we can see that the stack has been created. Let's go to the VPC. and find the virtual private gateway. And here we have the spoke VPC B virtual private gateway created and attached to the spoke VPC B. Under the tag, we need to add another key. Transit VPC spoke the value is true. Now we go to the VPN connection. As an option for the monitoring purpose, we can open up the CLI for the two CSRs and look at the logs. We can see that the tunnel 3 and tunnel 4 are coming up. If we refresh the VPN connection, we'll see that the two VPN connections are being created at the moment. Give it one minute and you will see that the two tunnels are available. And if you click on them and uh, look at the tunnel details, it will show that the tunnels are up and up for both of the VPN connections. This is for the second account. Let's go back to the primary account to double check. We can see that the tunnels are up for the two VPN connections. Now let's move on to log into the two VMs behind the spoke VPC to use ping test to see if we can, they can reach each other. Now let's open up two terminals to log into the VMs behind the two spoke VPCs. For the demo purpose, we configure the route tables of the spoke VPCs to use VGW as the next hub for the internal subnets and use IGW for internet so we can access the VMs. Now we are logging into the virtual machines through their elastic IP addresses behind spoke A and spoke B. After we log into them, we ping each other through their private IP addresses, internal IP addresses. And it is successful. This concludes the demo. To sum up, we created a transit VPC and connected two spoke VPCs from the same and different account. We verified the tunnels through the CSR, CLI, and AWS GUI. We also verified the solution by pinging the two VMs behind the spoke VPCs from each other. Thank you for watching this video and hope this is helpful.